Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex and gold and S&P fundamental technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 1st of October. I hope you all had a great trading week and uh, let's get into the week ahead. And so it will be a very busy week in the United States with the labor market report and appearances by several Federal Reserve officials including Chair Jerome Powell taking centre stage. Other key data to watch includes JOLTS job openings, ISM manufacturing and services PMI and factory orders. Globally, inflation rates will be released for Germany, the euro area and Switzerland. Japan will report on industrial production, retail sales, unemployment, consumer confidence and the Tankan Manufacturers Index. China will also release both NBS and uh, I think that's pronounced Caxing um, Manufacturing and Services PMI and foreign trade data is expected from Australia. Additionally, manufacturing PMI data will come from Switzerland. So lots going on this week. The main Probably market moving news will be the uh, I think it's non-farm payrolls on Friday, um, as well as it probably be like um, inflation rates as well for the euro area. So uh, yeah, some market moving news this week. So starting off as we usually do on the dollar index and the uh, this is the equally weighted dollar index. I'll leave a link in the top right hand side uh, if you want to click on that as to um, and I explain in that video why I use the equally weighted indexes and how you can add them to your trading view charts but looking at the dollar um, we are at these lows technically and it looks like we probably are going to go a bit lower now um, uh, the uh, the news from this is from Reuters and it says here that most major broker uh, major brokerages expect the U.S. Federal Reserve to lower interest rates by a cumulative 50 basis points across its November and December meetings after the central bank announced an outside 50 basis points uh, reduction earlier this month. So rate cuts, for those of you who are new to the channel, should typically and usually have the effect of... Um, of devaluing and depreciating a currency. And so um, the... Uh, the screenshot here really kind of shows um, the banks and what they expect to happen now. This isn't set in stone because it is data dependent. So depending on what happens with jobs uh, this week, unemployment and employment, um, this uh, cuts could either be reduced or increased. So um, if for example, the jobs numbers come out and they're a lot better than expected, showing that the economy is doing okay, then in fact, what we could see is um, a reduction in um, in, uh, in rate cuts. But that, that would have to be the jobs, they would have to be um, pretty much spectacular. But um, ultimately, uh, right now, we're seeing uh, major central, I say major, major central banks, major banks and institutions, brokerages, um, pretty much, uh, 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 I guess, uh, look for a 25 basis point cut at November and December. And we can actually see that as well on the FedWatch tool. And um, uh, for now, it looks like the market is pricing in more of a chance of 50 basis points. So a 53% chance of 50 basis points and a 46% chance of a 25 basis point uh, cut. And if, depending on, again, what happens on Friday, if the data comes out uh, as terrible in terms of the the, data, the jobs uh, show that there's uh, rising unemployment and low employment and the market starts to price in uh, a bigger rate cut for November, then what you're likely to see on the dollar index and the dollar across the board is more sells, right? So you might see a bit of a pullback this week. Uh, let's just uh, get this. You might see a little bit of a pullback this week, but again, the data is really kind of uh, going to depend. Um, it's going to be driving uh, prices, uh, depending on, of course, what happens with the data, right? So either we're going to get a move to the upside or we're going to get a move to the downside, depending on, of course, what happens to 
uh, the data, as I said. So uh, dollar at the moment, I think the path of these resistance is still to the downside, still sell trades. Uh, for me, nothing really, no, nothing to persuade me to want to buy the dollar anyway, not at the moment. The yen, now the yen, uh, we pulled back this week uh, quite a bit, matter of fact, and that was mainly due to um, the elections. They had some elections in Japan, and what was happening was that the um, one of the candidates who was expected to uh, to win was actually quite dovish on um, interest rates. So uh, I'll read this. It says here the yen reverse losses, uh, and this was on Friday, and surged against the dollar as Shigeru Ishiba was voted leader of the uh, Japan's ruling party, beating a rival who opposed interest rate hikes. Yeah, so the rival, um, whose name was Sane uh, Takeachi, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, she was the one that was um, opposed to interest rate uh, hikes. And so the market was thinking that she was likely to win or she had a higher probability of winning. So the market was actually pricing out rate hikes um, or, or prolonging the rate hikes, which was leading to a weaker yen uh, this week or last week. Um, and I'll continue reading. It says here, Ishiba, a party veteran who has served in several senior roles, including defense minister, is seen as supportive for the Bank of Japan's plan to gradually hike rates. He won against opponent uh, Sane Takiachi uh, in the runoff vote. She had said recently it was stupid to raise rates now. Speculation before the result was that Takiachi would win uh, had uh, led a drop in the yen. So basically, that was what was happening. So there was some rumor buying, yeah, that was going on with the yen overall. So the last five days, if you're wondering what was happening, that was pretty much what was happening. The market was pricing in a more of a dovish um, uh, prime minister, and then we got you know a hawkish prime minister, and so this is what's happened. So um, the yen is um, a little bit more of a buy in my book now. Um, I, I said at the beginning, actually, of the week, there was some um, some news to come out, and it was basically stating a case as to why the yen um, may have some trouble appreciating, and it still may do in the future, right? But right now, I think sentiment is with the yen, so I think any pullbacks uh, for the yen should be nice uh, buying opportunities or selling opportunities on the dollar yen, of course. That's really where... Um, you're looking to get short if you're looking to short this currency pair. And it would obviously uh, be a lot better if the Federal Reserve end up uh, cutting rates quite um, a bigger rate cut than uh, than 25, go for like the 50. So any pullbacks, I think, is likely to be um, uh, shorting opportunities on the dollar yen. So uh, that's really where um, uh, I think the path of this resistance is. Dollar Swiss, <clears throat> dollar Swiss, not really a pair I'm interested in. Uh, both central banks uh, are on a great cutting cycle, as are many central banks. But um, the Swiss franc did cut rates last week. Now, the uh, uh, I think there was some expectation that they would end up cutting by 50 basis points, but they ended up cutting by 25 basis points. And if you check the top right hand side, I'll leave a link to a private members webinar uh, where I did some analysis on the uh, Swiss franc and uh, really the reasons why they ended up cutting by 25 basis points. Um, but also as well, the dilemma that the Swiss uh, franc have in terms of monetary policy and really the reason why I'm still short on the Swiss franc. Now, I'm not going to be short in the Swiss franc against, for example, the US dollar. Um, it would be, you know, a stronger currency like, for example, the pound or the uh, the Australian dollar. Those are my two really top choices. Um, but ultimately, um, and even maybe the yen to a certain degree, that's on my list. But um, in terms of this currency pair, um, I'm not really interested in it uh, at all. So 
But if you are and you want to be a buyer, then I would probably wait for prices to maybe move down to these lows, fresher area of demand before looking for long trades. If you're looking for a sell trade and trying to buy the Swiss franc, then probably somewhere back up to these highs before looking for a short. But again, not really a pair I am interested in at the moment. The dollar cad, dollar cad, another pair not really interested in. The uh the Bank of Canada, um, I think they didn't have, a, um, I think it was uh, the GDP data, uh, preliminary month for month, didn't come out too great, it came out and kind of flatlined for the uh, for the August number, so um, it does look like, and there's uh, again some news reports coming out that the Canadian dollar could again cut by another 50 basis points, so uh, let's see what happens here. So any pullbacks, if you are looking to go short on the Canadian dollar uh, and buy the uh, the US dollar, then that would be really the play. But again, similar to the dollar Swiss, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in currently. Um, this level here as well of demand has been kind of touched several times. So again, not really interested in that at all. If I was looking to trade this just from a technical perspective, I would really rather wait for either a stop hunt or probably a fresher area of demand which is going to be somewhere around here in fact probably around that area there so for prices to come down into this area of demand and again when you have a wide area of demand what you want to do one of the things you can do is look for areas of support and resistance within that wide area of uh, demand or supply you've got level there level there and you've got that extra confluence so you know that there's going to be lots of demand technically here uh, just based off of uh, buying but of course we know that fundamental analysis is really what drives price so you have to be on the right side from a fundamental perspective um, for me anyway to, to, to stand a better chance of, uh, of uh, the trade going in your direction. Uh, pound dollar so again the pound dollar just keeps making higher highs as expected um, been waiting to get involved in this so still waiting for a pullback although I'm long in the pound I don't want to buy the pound at an expensive area not looking to buy the pound at highs so I've got to buy uh, when it's low so buy on a pullback so this area of demand looks very very nice for a buy trade um, again really the reasons why I'm uh, more bullish on the uh, the pound is that um, it says here anyway that currency trade is a shifting focus to sterling as the dollar and the yen lose their luster. So interest in the pound is being fueled by shifts, shifting rate bets. So Bank of England said it won't rush to cut rate interest rates, a stark contrast to the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank, which have already started easing. So Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey reiterated that view on Tuesday. Increasingly, we are seeing clients take the dollar out of the picture, says uh, Ruchir Sharma, the London-based global head of FX options trading at Nomura Holding Inc., he said the pound rising against both the euro and the Swiss franc are among the most popular trade ideas at the moment. And again, see, um, traders, uh, you know, the, the, the big traders are trading interest rates and they trade interest rate differentials. And, you know, so on one hand, you've got the uh, Bank of England who are looking to hold rates um, or be very cautious on cutting rates. Whereas you have other central banks like the Federal Reserve, like the Swiss National Bank, who are actually being a bit more aggressive in cutting rates. And that is leading to the rise in, you know, the uh, the pound. And I did a poll, matter of fact, on my channel and um, was asking traders who... Um, uh, who who thought that the uh, the rise in the British pound since August, you know, has been due to fundamentals or some sort of technical uh, strategy that you see on YouTube? And the majority of you, you know, believe um, that it was the fundamentals, and I would have to agree. So um, yeah, this is basically what we're uh, looking for. It's just really a pullback, right, into um, into some sort of demand zone. And uh, British pound at the moment should still continue to be a buy. Now, again, things can change. So the data has to support the the narrative. But as long as the data does support the narrative, the uh, the pound should be continues to be a buy over the dollar.
uh, pound yen. So again, the yen kind of strengthened uh, uh, on Friday due to the um, uh, the election results. Uh, so again, this isn't really a pair that I would be interested in trading uh, because you have really kind of two currencies, one currency looking to high rates, the other one not looking to high uh, uh, cut rates as much. So um, the pound is probably one of the one of the bullish currencies, I would say. And so you really want to trade more of a bit of more of a divergence of so strong versus weak, not strong versus maybe less strong. So um, but if you are looking for uh, a sell trade, that's very nice. Technically, if you're looking for a buy, then I would say down into this demand zone before looking at going long um, euro dollar so the euro didn't have great news um, this week at all so um, it was mainly to do with their PMIs so if we go to the eurozone channel and before we get into the euro just a quick reminder that we do have um, the trading 180 um, discord mentoring group opening uh, on the 30th of September so that's the Monday and it'll be around about 5 p.m. London time. And if you've been waiting to join, uh, then that'll be your opportunity. It will only be open for um, maybe about a, maybe about five days or so. I'm not going to open it for too long. Um, and it might be the last one this year. But if you're just getting a, a general overview of what I do at Trading 180, is I combine fundamental analysis um, with technical analysis and supply and demand strategies, right? That's pretty much where I sit I'm not one or the other I, you know both um, you know should go hand in hand for the best trading opportunities so um, if you do want to join go to trading180.com so continuing on really with the euro dollar um, and fundamentally uh, I was saying that the eurozone um, had some data and it said here that inflation in France and Spain plunged below two percent fueling bets that the European Central Bank will speed up the pace of interest rate cuts. And so um, with interest rate cuts, they're going to be driven by what inflation is doing. And so, um, yeah, the uh, inflation didn't come out great. It says here, cooling inflation across the 20 nation block has allowed the ECB to lower its deposit rate twice this year, with most policymakers indicating that a gradual path ha uh, down has begun. A surprise contraction in the private sector economy, however, has boosted wages that uh, monetary loosening will soon be accelerated. And I did talk about the uh, PMIs as well. So it says here about um, the inflation, French and Spanish inflation, but there was also uh, data, where was it now? It was saying the... Uh, uh, Euro momentum builds. Oh, where was it now? PMIs. PMIs. Here it was. Here was the um, the article. It says traders are growing increasingly confident that the European Central Bank will cut interest rates again next month, as evidence mounts the economy is weakening. Money markets imply a roughly sixty percent chance of a quarter point uh, reduction in October, up from about twenty percent last week. The last leg of the repricing was driven by U.S. data that showed consumer confidence unexpectedly fell in September. Um, and I'm sure it was talking about the uh, PMIs. I'm going to have to have a quick a bit of a look. One second, PMIs, PMIs, PMIs. I'm sure it was here somewhere. Um, here we go. Right. So PMI. Right. So Euro weak PMI surveys encourage expectations of faster rate cuts. And this is you're getting uh, information that I post also as well in the um, in our discord group. Um, normally I give on YouTube a bit of a snapshot. But this is the information that I do post from several, uh, not only Bloomberg, but a lot of uh, uh, bank analysis. And so uh, this was from a, a bank that we look at. And so it says here, Euro weak PMI surveys encourage expectations for faster ECB rate cuts. So we knew in the group that, you know, we wanted to be short on the Euro uh, this week. So um, this is basically what is happening, right? Um uh, and so that was we posted that on the 24th anyways uh euro against the dollar though is slightly different because in terms of the reason why it's going higher and the reason why it's going higher at the moment is because even though the euro had um you know uh, i guess rate more rate cuts uh being priced in so originally 
they were looking at October as uh, as skipping, right? So the, the market was like October, the ECB is likely to skip October and maybe go to November or maybe December, right? November and, and maybe December. But now, obviously, the uh, cuts for October are being priced into the market because of recent data. But even if the um, the central bank cut by 25 basis points in uh, October and November, yeah, it's still likely less at the moment, less than the Fed, because the Fed could end up cutting by 50 basis points. There's actually a higher chance that the Fed will cut by 50 basis points, depending, of course, on what happens with um, the data on Friday, right? So if they end up cutting by 50 and then maybe 25 in, you know, December, right, or November, I can't remember which one it is, but, um, you know, uh, 75 basis points, but 50 basis points for the ECB, then you're still, you know, the Fed is cutting more than the, um, than the ECB, which is obviously going to lead to prices going higher. So, um, it does look like at the moment, oh, sorry, going to the wrong channel, um, wrong, uh, wrong chart. Yeah. It does still look like the Euro at the moment just has a bit more of an edge than the, uh, than the dollar, which is the reason why you're seeing prices move to the upside. So you should never try to look at currencies and the data in isolation. It has to, you know, cause you're trading currencies in pairs. You always have to compare um, how bad or how good the data is in comparison to what it, you know you're trying to trade it against. So it could be some bad news for the euro, but if you're trading it against um, against the dollar, which is seems to be worse, then that bad news is not going to translate on a on a price chart, you know, in in any way. But yet, if you look at euro versus, for example, the yen or you know euro versus the Australian dollar, you'll see a different story. So um, you can go and do that and have a look. So um, at the moment, the euro um, euro dollar is at this high, and I do think that it will be driven uh, in terms of you know price this week will be driven by uh, what happens with the Fed and and um, and jobs. And so, if jobs does come out and supports maybe a twenty five basis point cut, yeah, then what you're going to see is likely see is probably the 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 actual euro sell off and will remain in this auction right this this range this sideways moving market if you you know if we have uh data that comes out that supports a 50 basis point cut then you're likely to see some sort of breakout to the, maybe the 112 113 um uh, area right so zooming out you might end up um hitting you know this area these highs right here so but let's see what happens uh with the data this week euro yen see different story right so you've got the um well you know one currency looking to and bank central bank looking to high rates one looking to cut rates and overall this is what you're seeing right so you're just seeing basically pullbacks right into areas where you want to get short so let's see what happens with this but if you are looking to go short on this currency pair which i would do uh but i haven't seen an entry just yet or anything worth uh, getting involved in any pullbacks into this zone, I think are really nice opportunities to look for uh, some short trades. That That's what I think is uh, the path of least resistance. Um, the euro pound, as we've uh, pretty much uh, discussed as well, the, the Bank of England are cutting, likely to cut rates less than the uh, European Central Bank. And so this is what we're seeing. Looking for a pullback, you know, at some point up into this area, but that's obviously not happened um and so we're just looking for really just just pullbacks right that's all we can do um in terms of uh, the technicals of course there are breakout strategies that you can trade but i don't really you know trade breakout strategies i don't sell at lows and buy at highs um and so yeah really i'm looking for a pullback up into uh, the 84 20s i think that's going to be a really nice area to look for some short trades on the euro pound i wouldn't really look for any kind of buy trades unless of course there's some bad data for the uh for the pound and really good data for the euro uh looking at the aussie dollar and again aussie dollar looking for some sort of pullback into a demand zone but of course that hasn't happened yet we just keep making higher highs right but there will be a pullback at some at some point you can't always prices don't always move to the upside so now it's just a case of 
waiting for prices to pull back into a demand zone. And if you believe that demand zone is a bargain, because not all demand zones are bargains, um, uh, you then you want to look for a buy trade. So there's a demand zone there, bit of demand zone there. Personally, I'd rather wait for the 68 round number as it does have the extra confluence of uh, this support and resistance zone here. So that's really where I'm looking for in terms of uh, the area that I would look to buy the Australian dollar, US dollar. And of course, it may pull back this week based on um, the US data, but overall, the Australian dollar um, and, and the RBN, uh, sorry, RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, are one of the last central banks to cut rates. I think it looks like they may cut in December or January next year. So as long as, again, that the data still supports those uh, the cuts coming later on in the year, I think any pullbacks should continue to be buying opportunities. Uh, looking at gold and gold keeps making new highs and um, again just waiting for pullbacks right and uh, there was actually some some gold news from last week uh, where are we now commodities no gold and silver uh, here it was so the latest position this was actually from uh, the week before last but I thought it was worth mentioning uh, the latest positioning data from the CFTC shows that managed money net longs in COMEX gold increased by 25,919 lots for a second consecutive week to two, uh, 252,628 lots as of September 17th this is the largest position that speculators have held in gold since March 2020 and similarly spec uh, uh, speculators increased their net long in Comex Silver by 15,222 lots for a second consecutive week to 42,312 lots as of last Tuesday, which is the largest position speculators have held since April 2022. Speculators are um, also increasing their net long in copper as well. So um, both precious metals really, um, although this is maybe a week old, um, I don't think anything has changed, right, in terms of the positioning. And somebody asked me about, um, you know, COT reports and if I can, you know, use, um, uh, basically make a video about fundamentals and COT. And really, I, I don't really look at COT or take any direction from COT at all because um, institutions, money managers, funds, um, although, yes, not all of them, of course, trade fundamentals and, you know, they go lower time frames and do liquidity, hunting, et cetera, et cetera, and technical strategies. You know, the main institutions, asset managers, look at fundamentals anyway over the medium to long term. So um, what you'll find is, is that as long as you're on the right side of fundamentals, you'll notice that the um, the big money is usually on the, on the same side as that. And you'll see an increase in, you know, certain positions on the COT reports, but that's based on fundamentals, right? So as you get fundamentals right, then you don't necessarily need to even look at the, um, uh, the uh, COT report. So, um, but you, of course, you know, you can use it as confluence, but I wouldn't use it as a as a leading indicator or or an indicator that you know is um, uh, uh, going to you know determine your overall direction. Definitely not. But um, of course, you can do what you what you uh, what you feel. Anyways, gold should still continue to be a buy. Go back through my past, all my past videos, uh, you know, uh, over the last few months, uh, probably this year, and I've been saying pretty much go long gold, and I haven't really looked at the uh, COT report that much when it comes to uh, gold um, or anything really, but um, I just thought I'd mention that. Anyways, a bit more of a pullback into, um, into a demand zone, and then you're looking at a long trade. S&P, so my analysis on the S&P, is going to be that it's going to really be determined on Friday. So again, Friday, um, because of, of course, non-farm payrolls. Now, when you get um, the data come out, again, depending on whether the data supports um, a soft landing or a hard landing, meaning if unemployment comes out and unemployment rises and employment goes lower a hard landing scenario meaning that the, the uh, gdp is likely to contract or contracting uh 
faster than the Fed would like and heading in more into a recession. And a recession is more on the horizon than further away than we're likely actually to continue falling. And that's my, uh, my, my, that's my assessment. The, uh, at the moment, the stock market, S&P and stock markets have been kind of rising based on not only the um, the interest rate uh, cut narrative, but the interest rate cut narrative into um, a soft landing, meaning that the recession, a recession is not uh, really on the cards and it's quite far away. So you're getting interest rate cuts, you're getting a decent economy. So what should happen is, is what's happening now, right? Where prices are making new highs. But this will likely reverse if the market starts to price in more or have more recession feel, fears and a bit more risk off. So um, yeah, if you are looking, if prices do pull back and the data supports, of course, a soft landing, um, then of course, any pullback should be looked at as basically buying opportunities if not then you're looking at uh, probably a bit more of a contracted uh, move to the downside so uh, there is some uh, demand here as well which I would may look to I don't know if I would necessarily get in and buy that high I'd probably look for buy trades around here so um, you do have some technical levels which can be used of course to trap traders right capture traders in their position right and i think that area there the highs of uh, july turning into you know resistance turning into support could be used to get traders you know to go long here you know then obviously there's a bunch of liquidity just below that swing takes them all out draws in traders who now say that this is a lower high lower low there's a change in trend and then ultimately to the upside right now um again this whole price action that you see is going to be really dictated by like i said what happens with uh, uh, the fundamentals so this scenario when you have decent data for the u.s economy is really the setup if not then any move is likely to continue to go to the downside right in terms of bad news for the u.s economy so that brings us to the end of the weekly analysis. Now let's get into the trade update. So a bit of a trade update on the pound Swiss and the Aussie Swiss. So um, pound Swiss, I'm now out of this trade. Uh, we managed to enter um, in, in at uh, 110.08. And uh, I've been trailing my stop up and now uh, my stop uh, loss has been hit it was hit on friday as we got this bit of a pullback and the pullback was obviously due so um that trade is a decent trade um and the aussie swiss i'm still in this trade so i've trailed my stop up to the 57 7 sorry 50, uh, 0.578 area so that's where i've got my stop loss and uh yeah, let's see what happens with the Aussie Swiss and any pullbacks. If I get stopped out, that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is just look for really um, uh, buy trades, uh, demand zones. So if prices do pull back to here, then excellent. Uh, but if they make higher highs, for example, and create a demand zone, then I'll just wait for another pullback into you know that demand zone before looking at going uh long so uh yep yeah, i'm out of i'm out of the uh the pound swiss and again same thing with the pound swiss i'll be waiting for prices to really kind of pull back a bit i do think the pound is more on the expensive side at the moment so we can uh, wait for something like that before looking for entries so as long as the um swiss franc and the swiss national bank are looking to uh, continue to cut rates and the australian dollar uh, are not and or not this uh, not as aggressively as the Swiss National Bank and neither is the uh, Bank of England then I'm going to continue um, you know looking for buy opportunities on those two currency pairs now uh, new trades now this week wasn't a great week in terms of the uh, uh, buying the yen so ended up losing um, uh, about five trades right so um, full stop outs on all of them so um, I did get in on the euro yen on the Monday uh, this was the entry and ended up being stopped out uh, of the all of the positions uh, uh, on the 
uh, on the Wednesday, I think it was, or the Thursday. Yep, so that was the Thursday where prices stopped me out. On the CAD yen, uh, I entered in twice this week, right? Entering um, and losing those trades. And again, just going back and it's to the reason why, fundamentally, you know, you'd want to be a buyer of the yen over the CAD. But um, the it was really the dovishness of the candidate that was the favourite to win, and I was kind of a bit blindsided by that uh, this week and I uh, didn't expect it to necessarily appreciate as much as it did. But of course, you know, my philosophy is really um, even if prices do, you know, go higher, it just means that the yen is getting cheaper and cheaper. Right. But none of us know where prices are going to reverse all of the time. Right. Sometimes, you know, we can get some really good. Um, entries etc right but this week I think it was a bit of an anomaly right it doesn't necessarily mean that this happens all the time if you followed my videos over the past two three months you'll see uh, that um, uh, I've had some really good trades and uh, we just I'm just in a little bit of a drawdown now uh, when it comes to this week I don't really you know uh, look at it like it's anything major and the New Zealand yen again two trades on the New Zealand yen so uh, yeah, it was like five trades in total, uh, ended up losing um, uh, this week. So it's quite actually a bit on the rare side that I get full stop outs on, on five trades. But I am actually now in this trade again. So um, I ended up entering on Friday after um, the news and the data came out uh, with regards to the uh, hawkish uh, prime minister uh, elections so I end up getting into two trades so I go down to the one hour so my original entry uh, my market entry was here and then I've um, placed an order sell it sell uh, order there uh, and it came up hit that so for now what I do what I'm looking for is now a one-to-one -one on this one right here and then I can swing trade the second one, right? And look for um, uh, to make some of that uh, some of that draw down back. So yeah, we'll see if prices do pull back. I'll be getting in here and getting in here and taking you know managing the trades as they go along. So yeah, let's see uh, what happens. So not a great week this week, um, but it was bound to happen. And um, as a bit of a reminder as well just to kind of show you um, a, uh, where is it now? Where did I put this? Uh, put it here, here it was, right? So the probability of X losing trades over 250 trades sequence. So um, if you do have a, you know, a win rate of around say 60%, uh, 50 to 60%, which is normal, right? Then um, ultimately five trades, you know, five to six trade losing streak, yeah? is pretty much inevitable right it's coming so um you can see here win rate losing streak right and if you've got about a 60 percent win rate then there's a 92 percent chance over a 250 trade sequence that you're going to lose um six trades in a row at some point of course you know the uh it gets the probabilities go lower as you know you uh you get um uh, into the losing streak but ultimately yeah you know these things do happen so I don't take it you know I'm not going to get angry or mad or you know start to change my strategy or anything like that it's just it happens to to everybody right um so I don't look at I don't look at um you know a five trade losing streak um as anything uh to ever worry about so Yep, those are the trades uh, that I've taken this week and I'm only in uh, now uh, two trades, which is the New Zealand yen and also the uh, Aussie Swiss. And I'm looking to enter um, some more trades this week, hopefully, depending on what happens with uh, some of the fundamentals. So uh, again, just a bit of a reminder as well that the um, if you're here still watching that the uh, mentoring opens tomorrow, the 30th. It will be only open for a limited time only. And so um, if you did miss it the last time, um, you know, feel free to join. Uh, check out Trading 180 if it's for you. I look forward to working with you. If not, I wish you all the best. Take care. I hope you have a brilliant trading week and uh, take care. Speak to you soon.